about periods and contraception and I'm really excited. Thank you all for joining me. So we've got Gabby, A and Katie. We're all gonna have some real good chats. But first, let me introduce you all for the people uh, watching. Gabby is the founder and CEO of Bloody Good Period, a charitable project campaigning for menstrual equity. That's right. Did I get that right? You did. Yeah, well done. <laughs> A is an LGBT uh, documentary maker and podcaster, and Katie is an endometriosis activist. There we go. And thank you all. <laughs> thank you all for spending this time with me. So we'll just dive in. What was your first period? Like, how did that happen? Do you have a good story or a terrible story? Mine's about cream eggs. Okay. So, <laughs> curious. I feel like I've told you this one before, I actually. Don't know. You're going to hear it again anyway. <laughs> um, there were no cream eggs harmed. Well, no, that's actually not true. No, that's not true at all because I ate, I ate three. I ate three when I was 13. One night, a Friday night, I had three cream eggs and I just had the worst stomach pains. And my mum said, it's because you've had three cream eggs. And you know when you know, there is a different pain, and I was like, It's like, it's not here, it's, it's here. It's lower, mother, <laughs> and cream eggs don't go down that low. And so I was like, it's definitely not, it's something else. Anyway, woke up the next morning, first period, and I was delighted. Oh, how old were you? I was 13, and I was like, absolutely gagging to start. Yeah. Like, oh my God, it was all we talked about at school, and <gasps> you know, and it was like a really, like, it was like a really little brown stain. We're, we're getting in there straight away. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so it, was re it was really little, like, it wasn't like this big gush that I'd expected, but that was it, and that was like, you know, a big relief for me because it was all I thought about. Oh, really? It was really, you know, that was me becoming, you know, grown up, yeah. I think. That's so interesting because I started when I was 11 and I remember only telling my mum and like not telling any of my friends because mm. we weren't quite at that age where we yeah, talked you about must it. Have been one of the first as well. First yeah. to get tits, yeah. first to bleed, really? all of it. Well, so mine didn't come until I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Quite similar. Yeah. I was dreaming about having my period. <laughs> I just wanted my period. All my friends had it and yeah, I wanted to feel like a woman and then when I finally got it um, I was 14 and um, I went and said to my mom I was like oh mom like, I've started my period she was like no Katie you're far too skinny to have your period I don't know there's this feeling that you have to be a certain weight to have a period I don't oh, know yeah. my mum well, thought you, this if you're underweight like your periods could stop or it might actually stop you from starting your yeah, period so yeah it might be that and yeah. I was just like, Mum, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm like, pretty yeah, sure that's what this my is. Period. And she was like, I don't think you have, darling. So I was like, OK. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. <laughs> so I went off to bed. I was like, I don't know if I actually thought, like, maybe I just cut myself or something. I don't know. And then I woke up in the morning and I'd started my period and I just ran into my mum's room and I was like, Mum, look, see, I have started <laughs> my period. I've been vindicated. <laughs> I made her feel really guilty. Um, but yeah, that. That was when it all started. The mothers are just in denial. Mm. Yeah. I think that is a big part of it. They're like, my baby can't grow up. Yeah, like there's no yeah. going back now. Like, yeah. yeah. That's it. What about you, A? Uh, well, I've always been, always been the youngest in my class. And so my best friend had been like talking about getting her period for a year. Like we'd run out of class because she was like, oh my God, that's it. It's my period. <laughs> like literally every couple hours. Was it, always period, just like, it, it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> every time it was nothing. And this one day I was just like going home um, after school and then I was like, oh, oh what's, what's that? Oh, that feels, what, what's happening to me? And then I kind of went home and I was like, oh, that's my period. And then I, I texted this friend and I was like, I think I've got, I think I've got my period. <laughs> and she was like, no, you can't. You're a year younger than me. <laughs> oh my god, it's like, like competition. Okay. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is. It's the thing about who's the most grown up. Exactly. Like so much. And then so I kind of like told my mum, and she was like, "Yeah, I'll get you some tampons." <laughs> like, oh, no, my mum was no prepared. She just like had everything. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to use tampons for ages. I was just, no. Oh, really? Mm -mm. Yeah. My mum made it her personal mission to have me and my sister using tampons from the get-go. Really? She was like, OK, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, put your leg up. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. That's because of, I think there's something weirdly shaming about, no, you don't get to put something inside your vagina. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel so like young. I'm going to be the same. Like, if I have kids who have periods, 
I'm going to be the same about the menstrual cup. I'm like, I'll be like, say, come yeah. on, <laughs> you can do it. We're going to do the fold. Okay. <laughs> come on, darling. Even before they've started their period, you're like, okay, show me the C fold. <laughs> <laughs> and can you do the Z? Okay, good. <laughs> well done, sweetie pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be oh there with God. you. Yeah, I'll see you there. We'll run some classes. Absolutely. Great. For sure. Um, what did you learn about periods in school? Like, what was that education like? We I, learned about yeah. like the the science of it. Mm -hmm. So like we had when was it like the year before the year of GCSE equivalent? So like year ten. When you're like fourteen. When you're 15. like fourteen, yeah. Wait, oh, that's wow. really late to have the education. Yeah, wow. yeah we, we had kind of, it at like 14. basically wow. they were like, okay, this is how the reproductive system works. Like very anatomically. So it was in biology. What, yeah, it was right. in biology yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. It was like this is what happens. Mm -hmm. And like kind of the same happened with the pill where they were like, this is what the pill does to like the anatomy of the human body in a way. Like it was nothing personal at all. It was nothing about like each case is different. It was like, this is how it happens. If it doesn't happen like that for you, yeah. something's wrong. There's definitely yeah. no education on like how to deal with having a period. No, yeah, yeah we didn't till we were 14. We had a mm. talk when we were 14 and it was the woman from Tampax came in and she had pads and tampons <laughs> and it was like this is it and she was very like okay ladies right this is maybe it was your mum <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really like, it's you know it really sort of like she'd obviously had to do it a lot and dealt with a lot of people giggling and so it was just like goes like this goes like this in there da, da, da. but by that time we'd all started so we were all just like mm, yeah mm. none of us listened to anything we all thought we were incredibly cool that was it yeah there was no real like this is what a Period looks like this is what a period feels like this is how to know there's something wrong or this isn't an average period it was very much like get your tampon get your pad off you go off you go yeah. wow yeah, yeah I had mine in year six like oh. 10 11 I think is yeah it? that's good but it wasn't very informative I was way off starting my period at that point so I found it quite scary oh. um, and it was just like some people in the class have started their period. Hands up if you've mm -hmm. started your period. Oh, and then, oh wow, yeah. just outing like, all of yeah. these children. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like they split the the guys and the girls up. Did they split them? Yeah, oh, yeah we like well. the boys went off, and we were just told they learnt how to masturbate. Why didn't <laughs> we oh get God. that class? <laughs> Why did they not teach girls? Right, I don't what? know. But that's, that's what ridiculous. they said. Oh, but they probably learned about wet dreams. Yeah, but like. That implies that we're, they're saying, boys, at some point you're going to learn how to masturbate. Yeah. But like, girls, no, 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 you're just going to. Oh, yeah. you're just going to. Yeah. Boys, you get orgasms. Girls, you yeah. get blood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is the sanitary towel. The moment you get your period, you can get pregnant. And that, yeah. God, that's infuriating, so, isn't it? Yeah. That was like when we were in school, but do you think there's still a taboo around periods now, like even in adulthood? How do you see that like manifesting? I think it's mostly people being uncomfortable mm. about the topic. Yeah. Because like as soon as you start talking about it, firstly like all the annoying men just get like, oh, 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 I don't know, I don't want to hear about this, oh I don't care. God. And it's like, you really should care yeah. about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> I found quite a lot that actually, of course there's a taboo. There is absolutely a taboo and there's no denying it. But we, like a bloody good period, we just don't ever bother really talking about the taboo because mm -hmm. once you've established there's a taboo, okay, well, what is what needs to be done now? Now you need to talk about the actual thing. And the more that you say, yeah, there's a taboo, there's a taboo, there's a taboo, you're just reinforcing that taboo and saying, yeah, this taboo is okay. And actually, like, it's really funny because whenever I, I we have we now like do a thing called stay in the room where we talk to men about periods. And actually, like I often find that once you've broken first that like okay, we're going to talk about periods. Huh, 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 they're <laughs> absolutely fine about it. They want to know. They've got yeah. questions. Okay, they might not have the education that we have, but that's not their fault. It's because they were sent out the room um, mm. to talk about wanking. Yeah. And, <laughs> Like, actually, most of them, they want to know and they're interested because yeah. a lot of them might have female partners or, you know, really close friends who menstruate as well. And, like, we, I think we, we've we allowed, like, the male population to keep this taboo for themselves where we're like, no taboo, mm -hmm. no taboo. OK, yeah, poor boys, you, you've got a taboo. And actually, like, none of us really want it. Mm. No one, the only pl places that are profiting from it are the ones that really shouldn't be. I find mm. in the comments on my like the hormone diaries videos there's a lot of comments being like i'm a guy and i'm watching that this is this weird yeah. and then there's loads of comments like underneath it being like no i'm a guy and i'm here too yeah. and, and i'm like yay this yeah is great. that's amazing and it's 
It's education, right? I see a taboo, but it's because of education, particularly with men. Like my my partner now knows absolutely everything about periods. Like he's brilliant. But when I first met him, he was like, "Oh, okay. So, can you like?" Can you pee when you have a tampon in? Wow. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember having that question mm -hmm. when I was like 12. I did not understand that they were different holes. Yeah. And I sort of ridiculed him first of all. Yeah. Then I was like, actually, where would you have why has that? no one told yeah. him this? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. almost felt sorry for him that he had no idea. Mm. I remember when I first started using a menstrual cup and I was like, oh my God, this is fascinating. I can like see it in there. Um, and I like called in my partner, like, look at this. <laughs> I think it it's amazing to see it. <laughs> I mean, I love nothing more than to be like, yes, this is very day three. Like, <laughs> to know myself, but you yeah. know, I'm happy to show anybody. Oh my God, um, is there like an Instagram account of people's like, oh pictures of full God. menstrual cups? I mean, I wonder if that would get flagged. I wonder if they I mean, need to get rid of that. Yeah, Why? they don't like pictures of discharge, as we discovered today. Maisie Hill just got... Oh, really? Just, ...just got deleted. So I just put a picture up of my spit in my fingers and put it next to it and was like, OK, what's the difference? Yeah. Because she's, she's incredible. She's talking about cervic yeah. cervical fluid yeah. that no one ever talks about. Then Instagram delete it because it violates community standards. It's like, what, because it came from a vagina? That's yeah. why it violates community standards. Like, let's all just, you know... Let's be open about it. It's like the context that offends people rather than mm. like the image itself. Yeah, exactly. That's really interesting. Hey, I wanted to talk a bit more about your experiences because like when did you realize that you were non-binary and did that have an effect on like your relationship with your period and how you felt about it? Uh, yeah, well, quite late actually because mm -hmm. like um I've always felt very different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not going to go that route. Um, but yeah, basically I uh, came out as gay when I was in my last year of high school. Mm -hmm. Like it took me a while to get there because the media does not help you. Um, and I learn everything about me and the world through the media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the summer before I started my last year of high school, I ended up watching like Glee and Skins and... Um, Great it, like Grey's Anatomy mm -hmm. and stuff like that and like I always was like oh my favourite character is always the lesbian <laughs> I wonder why <laughs> so and then weird. suddenly it clicked um, but yeah it took me another like three years after that to like figure out gender not because I had not been exposed to it but because I would not been exposed to it in the media like mm. I only had my friends and I was like no I don't correspond to any of those if you're not given any other options like That's how do you know they're out there like and like I ended up scrolling through Tumblr and like watching yeah. things, and then I watched Carmilla, the web series. Oh, I don't know that. Mm. It's about vampires and lesbians, and it's quite good. Uh, <laughs> lesbian and, vampires. And in there, there's there's a non-binary scientist, and I was like, I could get behind that. I am a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was kind of the moment where there was no like big revelation. It was kind of like, oh, it's always been there. Like I've never, I've never liked to be associated with womanhood, but I never felt like a man either. To me, it was like suddenly, it was so easy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, then maybe that's why like I really hated my period. Like my period was mm. the worst. And it's always been the worst because like of adenomyosis, um, which we might talk about later. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the feelings of why I felt so bad during my periods. And then I started like looking stuff up and like YouTube was the biggest help. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, kind of understanding that it was dysphoria that I felt and it was kind of the idea that like having a period made me feel bad because it didn't align with who I felt I was. But yeah, that's kind of like Did you feel like thing. you were like this thing shouldn't be happening to me or like It was mostly like this thing everywhere. I've always heard that this thing is for women. Right, mm -hmm. okay. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm not a woman. I don't think I should be like getting this. And like at, at that point, I was very much like, I don't want children. I never wanted children. I probably never will want children. That's changed a bit. But like at that point, I was like, I don't want this. I really yeah. don't want it. And it's there and there's nothing I can do about it. And it's always horrible. And it's like every other week for seven whole days. And it was just really Every worst. other week? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is I a mean, lot. that is bad in itself without yeah. the dysphoria. Yeah. But on top of it, geez. that's a lot of time spent being not happy with your own body, yeah. which is not a nice thing to be. No, it was not great. And that's an interesting thing you brought up about how 
periods are so associated with womanhood. Like, we, we were all taught, like, oh, when you get your period, that is you becoming a woman, and everything around it is super gendered. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, ooh, feminine hygiene. Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, yeah. feminine and hygiene, like, the two words that just <laughs> should... Oh, hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, your period's not dirty. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not dirty. It's just, it's just fluid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, language is so interesting, because... I only realised this when we were having that conversation recently about how we call them sanitary products. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, my whole life I've just been calling them that because that was mm. the word that that's the, yeah. I was told. And that was but, the word invented. And that's the word that's yeah, on yeah. all of the signs, like yeah. dispose of your sanitary products in the yeah. sanitary bin. Yeah, because <laughs> oh, don't touch your vagina, <laughs> nothing like that. Like that's, that's what's so different about the menstrual cup is that you're like, I, this is unsanitary and, it, and it's healthy and it's fine. fine. Yeah. yeah, this Not is unsanitary. <laughs> How dare you? Because <laughs> yeah. with the work that you do with um, Buddy Good Period, that is all very inclusive and you're very deliberate with mm. the language that you use, mm -hmm. which I think is amazing. When I set it up, I was using, I was, I hadn't even thought I was saying women and girls, you know, women and girls mm -hmm. and people who, you know, it, not even people. And then just, I think it was like really, really quickly, just a couple of people messaged me on Instagram about it and they were just like, I'm non-binary, I feel a bit excluded by this. And then it just clicked and I was just like, of course, mm. of course. And so we just, ch it didn't feel like a decision. It just was like, duh, like obviously now we'll yeah. include everybody because we hadn't thought to. We get a lot of pushback for it because people do want to, you know, there is some sort of radical feminist that really want it to just be, it's about women. But actually it's not because not all women menstruate yeah. and not all people mm. who menstruate are women. I think it very importantly is that if we just define like what a woman is by if she's bleeding, like what mm. are we saying about, you know, people who have gone through menopause or... Uh, yeah. People who might not ever have a period, but are I, but identify as women, or people who identify of, of, as women who have a hysterectomy. You know, we just sort of carve ourselves into this tiny little corner, and mm -hmm. actually, like, it doesn't help any of us. Yeah, it excludes more people than exactly. you realise. What do you all think of um, the words menstruators and bleeders? I love them. Said, yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's what it is, bleeders. isn't it? We, like we we bleed. Like mm -hmm. okay, we don't cut and bleed, but like and we menstruate, it's not saying that we walk around this world going, I am a menstruator and that is how I define myself and you are a menstruator, oh no, you're not a menstruator. It's like when we're talking, we're here at a round table talking about periods in this context, yeah. surely menstruator is adequate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's for me, I don't know about anybody else. I like it, except I sometimes find it hard to say, say, because I can't, <laughs> I exactly can't get, I can't I get the R right. Yeah. I'm like, menstruator. <laughs> just missed it out, just like, I go with bleeders. I like <laughs> I can say that one. <laughs> yeah. I, like no, I, I really like bleeders. Katie, so mm. you have endometriosis. What is that, first of all? Mm -hmm. So endometriosis affects one in ten bleeders. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or do you have to age? have a period to have endometriosis? Or do, can it just be that you can have a womb? Sorry, I've asked you a very technical question. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Yes, no. Ah. It's defined as tissue similar to that that you find inside the womb the endometrium found outside of the womb. Oh. So it can be found on the ovaries, fallopian tubes. Yes, yeah. so it can be on your reproductive system mm -hmm. um, and it can be elsewhere. So I had it on my bladder, I have it on my bowels, oh. you have it in your diaphragm, your lungs, they've even found it in the brain. Oh my God. How did it get up there? <laughs> I have no idea. Get back out. <laughs> What is it? It's the tissue. Yeah, similar, similar. They still mm. don't know exactly what it is. Oh, wow, I'm not surprised. So, yeah, <laughs> right? If they don't know what it is, there's no cure for it. Uh -huh. And yeah. it's pain, incredibly painful. Yeah, so Again, yes and no. Because so it depends on the person as well. It completely yeah. depends. There is no correlation between the amount of pain you have and the amount of disease that you have. And by the amount of disease, that means the amount of like tissue that you yeah, had. Yeah, okay. that's found elsewhere. Oh, wow. So it, it goes elsewhere in the body, and then every time you have a period, it bleeds. But it, it's got nowhere to go. So it just stays there, it bleeds. So that's what causes the pain? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that sounds So it's like an inflammation. Mm -hmm. Because you can have the pain while you're on your period, but then you can also just have it all the time and it's just a chronic pain. And that's how it got for me. Right. First of all, it was just my periods, and that happened for so long. And then I just had chronic pain, and I found it how to walk. Like my tubes were all twisted and like stuck to my abdomen, and I had no idea. Mm. 
And it was only at that point that I started seeing a doctor um, and found out it was endometriosis. Yeah, because there's a really long time that it takes for people to get a diagnosis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like the average is like eight to ten years yeah, or something. Exactly but that. And it took me nine years. Wow. Because, again, when it comes to education, I wasn't told about painful periods and what is a painful period and what's normal. Mm -hmm. So I always thought I was normal. I was in like debilitating pain from the get-go. As soon as I had my period, I was in bed crying. Like, it was so painful, it made me sick. And I thought that was normal because yeah. I was never told mm -hmm. otherwise. Because we're, we're all kind of taught that like, if you menstruate, that pain is like a normal part mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. The same way that like, the first time you have sex is gonna be painful. Mm -hmm. Like all these right. things, it's like, for having a womb, it's just like, life is just gonna be painful for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're yeah. not actually given any indication of what is normal and then what is like, actually, you should probably go to a doctor because mm -hmm. you don't have to suffer like this. Exactly, and I went to the doctor over and over again, yeah. over nine years. And that's the worst I was thing, it's like off. when doctors just don't believe you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they like, don't yeah, even know. They don't, yeah, they yeah. don't know. Your condition's quite similar. What was mm. the name of that? Yeah, it's adenomyosis, which is uh, the same thing where some of the tissue goes away, but it stays in the like uterus mm. muscle. It just makes it really painful and like very heavy mm. period, which is um, like the symptom is it's very heavy period. Mm. And they're very long and the cycles are very short, which is like, it should have clicked sooner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like somehow it didn't. Diagnosis also took forever because my gynecologist, because in France you go to your gynecologist every year from the moment you're like 16, pretty much. Like it's encouraged to do that. Oh, um, the dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like she didn't believe me. She was like, yeah, you're just, because like I have quite high pain tolerance. And so I kind of like downplayed it a little bit. And then like I had a horrible back pain like forever and that was the thing like I went to see an osteopath for the back pain and she was like that doesn't sound like back pain to me oh. and she's the one who was like you should go see a gynecologist ask for an like it wasn't an MRI it was like a uh, ultrasound off. ultrasound that's what okay. it's called yeah an ultrasound and then I went to see her again and she was like, oh, yeah, lol, sorry. <laughs> Maybe she didn't she say lol. Seen it <laughs> wow. No, she didn't say lol, but. But yeah. What is daily life with endometriosis like for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gosh, it, <laughs> it can differ. Mm -hmm. um, I still have quite painful periods. Like, I'm lucky to have had good treatment. Have you had um, a laparoscopy? Yeah, yeah so I've that's a laparoscopy. Surgery. Yeah, so I've had three. Sweet. No. no, it's kind of when they um, they, they go, well, no. that's what you don't want. You don't want that. That's what, what that? you burn. don't want. They burn it off. Burn. Yeah. So yeah. I've had that twice. So they put a little hole by your belly button, they go in, they sort of pump up your belly with air, um, and then they look around, see if they can find endometriosis. Now, the majority of gynecologists burn it away. It's called like ablation surgery. But endometriosis, you have to think of it like an iceberg. If you're burning it away, you're just getting that tip. And there's ah. that bulk of it left behind. So I had that a few times and it just did not help me. And then when I started doing a lot of research, connecting with the online community, I then found out about the thing called excision surgery. And that's when they go in like the same, but they cut it away. And they get, they get that whole iceberg. And that can give you so much relief. And it's given me a lot of relief. Yeah, because people with endometriosis tend to like have to have multiple surgeries throughout yeah. their life. Yeah. Right, and then they say with excision, if you have like a really, really good surgery where they cut it all away, you shouldn't need to have these repeat surgeries. So they don't, it doesn't grow back or? Five to 10 years, you should be good. Oh wow. Well. But with like burning it away, that, that could be months. That's just burning. taking the surface off. Yeah, this, yeah, real short term. Have you had to have any surgeries because of yours? Or? Uh, no, no, I actually, my doctor put me on the pill that mm -hmm. doesn't stop, so I just don't have my period and mm -hmm. haven't had my period in ah. two years. The progesterone only? Yeah, yeah, progesterone only. And yeah, basically I've, I've been on the pill before to try and regulate the fact that my period was horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I could not stand the pill. <clears throat> Like, just, I couldn't do it. Like, I had all the side effects and it was really horrible. Was that with the combined one? Yeah. So it had oestrogen in it? Yeah, well, yeah. That, was, that was ages ago. That was like <clears throat> five, four, five years ago. Mm. Uh, I had that for like six months, tried three different ones, and then my gynecologist was like, you know what, you don't need it, just don't do it. <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> we'll gladly take that advice. <laughs> Thank you. And so when I came back, she was like, like I'm going to have to put you on the pill again. 
because there's no other option for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, is there really nothing else? Because I was, before what she'd done is she put me on really strong painkillers that I had to take during my period and that was fine for me. Like I started to like be fine with that. Mm. But like they're not meant to be long term. <laughs> like they're not okay. a long term solution. And so she was like, yeah, the pill is the only solution, but I'll give you like the smallest amount of pill that I can possibly give you. And so it's like this, uh, yeah, it's just a pill that I take every day and so I just haven't had my period in two years and it's actually solved the problem. Does it help with your dysphoria as well then? Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Immensely, because like I don't have a period anymore, so that part of... Two birds, one stone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was actually kind of, I mean, I still hate being on the pill and I wish that someday I'll find something that can do the job without me having to be on the pill. Mm -hmm. but because no money is put into research about uh, wombs and periods, then I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, but if it does, then I'll gladly do that. But um, yeah, basically it's been really good because obviously since I don't have my period anymore, then I don't think about womanhood once a month. And it's not so, confronting yeah, you in your underwear. It's like, it's not, it's not there. <laughs> and so it's, yeah, it's, it's been much better. I wanted to ask about like tracking your cycle and if any of you have experimented with the various different apps that are out there and n not necessarily your experience with them, but like, has it led you to discover something about your body that you hadn't quite like nailed down yet, but suddenly you're like, oh my goodness, this is what my body is doing. I'm not on any contraception, but I track my period mm -hmm. with an app with Clue. Mm -hmm. And the discovery of how you feel. Oh, do you track your mood I stuff track well. the mood and like how I feel about like when I'm, when I'm ovulating is completely different before my period. And like, I mean, it's, it's been actually like really invigorating and really, um, like empowering actually, because I know, well, do you know what, at this point in the month or, you know, my 32 day cycle, I'm just not gonna feel great and that is okay and you just need to look after yourself and just, you may, you know, stay inside more. But then there's a part of the cycle where I'm like a machine, mm -hmm. you know, I am like getting stuff done left, right and centre. And so mm -hmm. I try and like plan my work, not my work day, but my work life around my cycle because it means... Make your period work for you. It, it works for me, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, when I've got this really big thing to bash out, I'm like, save that for like day two to day 12. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if you've just got to get a lot of reading done, like just leave that until just before the period. Otherwise, you know, you're just gonna like, you're gonna be like bursting with like energy and womb stuff and there'll be <laughs> eggs flying everywhere. And cream and, and eggs you know, flying. Oh yeah, cream <laughs> eggs. I know that's not how periods work. <laughs> Don't put your eggs flying everywhere. But yeah, that's been really interesting for me because it's just still on the app. I don't trust it as for contraception. Um, oh, yeah. I don't think I would, yeah, I don't think I would be like, oh, it's fine because I'm, you know, I'm not ovulating. There's like a sex. next level of like data collecting that you need to do yeah. for that because yeah. those apps can kind of estimate your yeah. fertile window, but yeah. by no means yeah. the exact day you ovulate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And also learning about like how, so you can sort of find out more about like where your discharge, I'm fascinated by discharge. Oh this my God. Month. Yeah, the oh different. You look at where your discharge is and that's how you know if you're textures. ovulating. Yeah. I was blown away by this. I mean, it's I had fascinating. No idea. It, this has been kept secret from us. Yeah. Why weren't we taught that? Yeah, I know. Like the egg white. The egg mm. white is to catch sperm. <laughs> right, like, that's when you're really fertile. <laughs> it's like a superhero thing. Mm. Like, <laughs> it is literally like Spider-Man <laughs> coming out of your vagina going, right, sperm, come on. <laughs> and I'm going to keep hold of you. And then like other days it's like, no, I don't care. Right. Like, it's, you the, know. The, the, the discharge to like bat him away. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, uh. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, I was yeah. reading a book and it was saying about like the egg white. And it was explaining it and it was saying, okay, so sometimes in the month you may feel like a bit wet in your underwear, but you haven't been turned on. <laughs> this is because you're ovulating. Yeah. And I was like, was just oh discharge. my goodness, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Because I always feel like I don't feel anything yeah, right I mean, now. Why am I feeling yeah. this down here? Yeah. But, and once it's you the start cervical to mucus. It's the cervical mucus. And once you start to recognise where it is, you're like ready for it. And you're like, mm-hmm, ovulating. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Just amazing. before my period. Yeah. yeah. And you've used um, like the tracking thing, but you mm -hmm. used it to help you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so I used, yeah, I used the tracking to get pregnant and that was amazing. And 
that's how I learned about this fertility mm -hmm. awareness method. And I felt like I'd missed out for so much mm -hmm. of my life not knowing about it. But now that I've had a baby, I just do everything backwards. So, yeah. yeah, I just flip it upside down. I still have the same app that what was helping but instead me of, to chart, Instead of so like having pregnant. the most sex during that time, you're like, yeah. avoid. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, so I just do it all backwards now. And it works for me at the moment. Yeah, and we just didn't know this stuff, did we? Yeah. At school. No. I had no clue about any of this stuff until my friends all started having children. And I was just like, oh, you can't get sex. You can't get sex. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You can have sex whenever you want. You can't, you can't get pregnant every day of your cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Because my boyfriend, I was just like, look at it, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> that is it's it's amazing, like. right? It's when you wah, stretch wah, it for wah. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't sing, but if you want it to, you yeah. just boomerang it. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes, so boomerangable. <laughs> boomerang your discharge. Oh, I love it. Love oh. it. Mm. That's a really interesting point, though, about like being able to get pregnant because in school, sex ed is very much like, how to not get pregnant. Mm. And so when you're taught how to not get pregnant, they like fail to tell us that actually, for most people, it's actually difficult to get pregnant because there is only this window. And I remember um, reading recently, one randomly timed act of um, penis and vagina intercourse, the likelihood of that resulting in a pregnancy is 3%. Wow. And you're like, say what? Yeah, like genuinely yeah. in my head, it's like 100%. 100%, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. right? Yeah. yeah. But, I, I understand like why we drill this into young people because if we told everyone like actually there's only a three percent chance but that's from one time if you're then having like sex a lot then obviously your chances increase mm -hmm. but what it means is that you know young people might go and have unprotected sex anyway and then they're not getting pregnant and they're like mm -hmm. well I must be infertile and then continue and then get pregnant mm -hmm. um, and we're just not taught about that window, like you said, like reverse engineering it, mm -hmm. but it, there's a lot of work involved in mm. using that method correctly, yeah. which is why we don't tell young people about it because there's so much room for error. And I think they say if you follow it, there's a really, really slim chance you could get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But if you're following it, you kind of have to be aware of that. If you were like 100%, like I do not want a baby 100%, then they would say it's not the best thing for you to do, mm -hmm. follow. Mm -hmm. because there is that. But the same with like the pill, mm -hmm. any yeah. form of contraception. There's just a lot, I think it, like the fertility awareness method, it like suits a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. And I think that person is like someone who's probably in a relationship, not the end of the world if they do mm -hmm. get pregnant. Someone who has a regular sleep pattern because you have to take your temperature mm -hmm. every morning at the same time. And if you are ill, hungover, or like have slept more or less than you normally do, then that can affect your temperature. If you travel a lot, so like changing mm. time zone also affects of it. Of course, yeah. So it, it's a big commitment. Yeah, it is, wow. exactly. And so it only really works for like a small amount mm. of people, which is why I get that you don't encourage Mm. like teenagers to like like go forth you'll be fine it's like mm, yeah. maybe not yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I think with that that's because what the, the way that we do teach contraception to young people is like there's there's nothing to do with pleasure there's mm -hmm. nothing to do with really relationship I mean maybe there is now but certainly not when I was at school there's nothing to do with like healthy relationships there's nothing mm -hmm. to do with anything that isn't penis and vagina sex. Mm -hmm. yeah, how to avoid getting pregnant. Don't have sex with a penis. Yeah, like, <laughs> My SEO method. Of yeah. It's been working. <laughs> or like, you know, it, but it's also about like STIs. Don't catch STIs. Mm. Yeah. Um, which you I mean good, probably don't catch STIs. But like, if you're just making it so completely binary, you're not really, it's not just that you're forgetting the people in the middle, but the people in the middle are lost. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're like, if you're not learning that actually sex doesn't have to be penis and vagina, then you are maybe at risk of not having a fulfilling relationship because maybe you don't want to have that kind of sex mm -hmm. because, and then you think you are lacking, whereas actually you're just having sex the way you want to have sex. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, right. I feel okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could switch off your period, like no side effects, none of that. You don't have to take like a hormonal pill mm -hmm. to do it. But if you could just be like, <clears throat> period be gone, would you? Yes. 100% yes. yes. Like, I'm, done. I'm, I'm done. I'm just done. I've done enough. <laughs> you know? yeah. Had my periods yeah. for like 10 years. Yeah. Would give them up. 
Yeah. You sound like you've got your period, like, yeah, I don't working think I for would. you. Yeah, I don't think I would. I think because I work in periods now, I am very, very lucky in that my life can work around my period mm -hmm. because it has to. But it's not that heavy. It's regular to the day. Oh, it's, so yeah, it's mm. it's really sort of it's not that painful. I mean, I do get period pains, but it's doable. And there's just something about it. I just do think I don't know if I would give it up actually, mm -hmm. because if it, it connects maybe in a sort of almost like completely opposite way, mm -hmm. it connects me with myself and not in a sort of hippy dippy like. Mm. I don't want to go and sit in a red tent with anyone, but I <laughs> like knowing how how my body's working and it, mm. and it does feel manageable. Yeah but I realise that I'm so incredibly lucky that it is a manageable period and that it can fit into my life the way that, you know, works for me. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I'd turn it off. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, just is that because, because of the endometriosis? Yeah. yeah. For that reason, yes. Mm. Because if I never had a period, my belief is that I wouldn't have endometriosis. You wouldn't have pain. Um, exactly that. Mm -hmm. But there is some thought that it may be estrogen dependent and can it produce its own estrogen? What? I don't know. Mm. Um, but yeah, I would happily say goodbye to it. But then there, there is that small part of me that feels it connects me to my body. Mm. And there's something really natural about it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's I don't an enjoy interesting my period. One. I hate it. It gives me so much pain. It gives me this chronic pain. There's just something about it. Mm. I feel I like when, like when mine's off. finished, though, I feel like a sense of like relief and elation, which is almost like, you know, like you have the highs and the lows. Yeah. <laughs> and like to me, that that is something that I would rather have than not have anything at all. Mm. But we're not in a world that's set up to manage periods. We're just yeah. simply not. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if the world was different, if the workplace was different, if it just everything was different, it wasn't so completely tied to being a woman, mm. it would all feel like it would just just a part of life, just like having a headache, just like blowing your nose. Mm. You know, it's a bit icky, it's a bit annoying, but it's just part of life. You don't have to skip work, you don't have to skip school, you don't have to go and lie on your bed because there are ways that we've worked out that mean that it's okay to have a period. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, I have switched mine off, so I think I'm probably like, yeah, would also get rid. Mm. But um, not necessarily because the period itself was bad. Like, I think I'm the same as you. Like, the period was manageable, like, a bit of period pain, but, mm. like, fine. My issue was other period bodily side effects. Like, my boobs would ache for two weeks before oh, I would come on. Oh, so yeah. for, like, 14 days, it was, like, to the T. And this is another thing that I learned from doing the period mm, tracking yeah. app. Because I was like, oh, my tits are hurting. I'll, I'll log that in. And then I remember looking at the data and being like... Oh, <laughs> okay, yes. so my tits, yeah. and it was like so painful, yeah. so heavy, couldn't like properly hug people. I'd be like, stay away. Yeah. And it would just be, oh, getting this. it would just be the yes. worst two yeah. weeks. <laughs> and I'd be so grateful for when my period arrived. Yeah. Because usually day two of my period, it was like, my tits yeah. feel light again. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I can walk around like a normal human being. Like I'd be taking my bra off in the evening and as the bra was coming off, I'd have like a hand in ready to catch it. Cause mm. if, it, if it actually dropped, I'd be like, fuck. Like, yeah. So painful. And then I just Gosh. got the coil and I'm not dealing with it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, no. Now you say that, now that I've like been tracking my period, I'm like, oh yeah. Put your hands I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> now that I've been tracking it, um, I have noticed that my boobs like, are really, really sensitive mm -hmm. before and it is uh, almost unbearable. Mm -hmm. And I think that I wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't been tracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you just kind of go, know. oh, oh it's a bit I, I just, my tits hurt yeah. sometimes. But oh, then once just, you start yeah. putting the data in, you're like, yeah. oh, it's not sometimes, it's these specific days yeah. every month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a bit about contraception, but I wanted to like dive into that stuff a bit more. What was your like education about it in school? Because I feel like we've mentioned that if we got any sex education at all, it was how to not get pregnant. And so a lot of contraception was involved in that. Like for me, we had a nurse come in and just go, this is the pill, this is this thing, this is this thing. And even though that was maybe the most thorough education I had, like sex ed that I had, I still, as an adult, was clueless about actually how they worked, mm -hmm. what they did to your body, how to talk about them, what options there are. I don't know, what was your experience with that? Mine was at like sexual health clinic. Oh, really? Um, I don't know, like at school, the same as when we were talking about periods, like everyone wants their period. Have you had your period? Are you in the in crowd? Then you have that, have you had sex yet? All my group of friends were having sex. 
so they're like, oh, I have my period, I've started having sex, therefore I need to go on the pill. I had started my period, but I wasn't having sex, but still I went to the sexual health clinic because I wanted to be on the pill because I wanted to say I was having sex. And that oh, was it. really? Yeah, it was like a thing. I, it was where I grew up. I grew up in Essex, so I don't know if that's why. But it, oh. it was a thing. Yeah, that's um, so interesting. To go yeah. to the sexual health clinic. It was like a status clinic. symbol. Yeah. Oh. Exactly that. Oh, wow. And it's like, oh, I need to get my pill so I don't get pregnant. <laughs> so I don't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that was my experience initially with the pill. And then as time went on, it was then when I started visiting a doctor because my periods were so painful that then they started trying me on different pills. I know I tried so many mm. because I got really bad side effects. Mm. Like the yeah. first ones, like headaches, mood swings, I felt so so unwell and then they changed it again and take it back to back but then I would bleed constantly so for me the pill never worked yeah. like for my period did you anyway I didn't any... get pregnant yeah yeah, but, yeah. That, did you have any worked. other stuff like did you ever try like the implant or I had the coil I had mm -hmm. the Mirena coil which That's first of all like I liked it first of all when I heard about the coil I actually thought it'd be like a spring yeah <laughs> it goes did. like I don't know up <laughs> And around your and like, then, like catches them <laughs> like <"Whoa!" laughs> shoots them back off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you <laughs> slinky in your room. eggs go up, sperm goes down. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought it was, first of all. But then I found out more about the Mirena. I had that put in under general anaesthetic after I had surgery. Ah. So it was done at the same time. Oh, I wish I had a Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it can be painful. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. They say if you haven't had a child, it can be incredibly painful because your body tries to expel it because it's a foreign <gasps> body Ooh. in your womb. Yeah. Oh, um, mine was. God. So I, was they, they gave me um, mm. a local anaesthetic injection. So actually putting it in, I didn't feel because mm. they, inje they injected my cervix, <laughs> which hurt. But then, Oh my God, they injected your cervix. Yeah. Oh my God, how long was the needle? I don't know. I didn't see it. I was oh. like lying back. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't actually feel them putting the coil in, but I had the, the pain, the pain out afterwards. Of this world. Like, you know, you said like in so much pain, you were gonna, I thought I was going to vomit. Yeah, it was horrible. And I bled for eight weeks straight. Oh, God. I bled for a month, but it was mostly spotting. And then okay. after that, like, I've had nothing. Yeah, that's good. It, it was all right for me for a while. Six months, amazing. Mm -hmm. No periods, no pain. But then I don't know, it just kind of wore off. Yeah, that can happen sometimes. Mm. Um, yeah. And I had it removed. But the same with that, then the strings were too long, I had problems with the strings. Oh, really? Yeah. I couldn't find mine for ages. I was like, where are they? My fingers are too short, I can't, <laughs> like, I can't find my yeah. strings. <laughs> and then my doctor was just like, no, you should be able to feel them. And then I really tried, and then I felt them. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I will, <laughs> I will get that. <laughs> Come on, <Cool>. it. <laughs> so what were you taught about contraception in school? Nothing. Nada. I mean, apart from like, this Even is in what. Even in France? Yeah. It was like, this is what taking the pill does to your cycle, but like, nothing about the different kinds of pills, mm -hmm. nothing about the side effects, nothing about nothing, basically. We didn't even have the like, put the condom on the banana yeah, no, lecture. I like, I never, didn't have I that. never condomed a banana. Oh, I had no, that, but we, we put it on a test tube, which is the wrong size. Oh, that is not. The little um, tiny test tubes? Yeah, the little tiny science test tubes. Oh, that would be very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what penis is. Oh, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> Be careful with them, they might shatter. <laughs> and they're hollow. Thank you. <laughs> I love your story about why you went on the pill. Mm. Like, that's just really funny, well, but it's kind of sad. Said. I don't know. No, no, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, why did you start on contraception? Because I feel like we have this assumption that like, if you're on the pill, then it's like, oh, you're sexually active. But mm. people go on mm. um, the pill for all sorts of reasons. Yeah. I went on it for irregular periods. Okay. Looking back, I was only having periods for four years. So, of course, they were so irregular mm. a bit. But it was, I was finding it really stressful. I was in sixth form. And so I went to the doctors and they put me on the pill. And then I was basically on the pill... This was before I was like before I'd had like penetrative sex. So I was on the pill then for like 12, 13 years. Wow. So it was the same as you, like a few mm. different ones. Like just some didn't quite work. Some made me like really angry. I probably was very angry <laughs> anyway. And like some made me overly emotional. Some made me eat all the time. Um, I just was on it and on it and on it and just had never even thought about the fact that, oh God, my 
body is just being pumped with hormones every month all the time. And I know we have a bit of a thing now because we're now we're looking more into like natural cycles and, mm. and thinking more about hormones. I know hormones aren't inherently bad for you. It's definitely a bit zeitgeisty mm. though. Like, cause, yeah. Because I came off the pill, which is what started the whole like hormone diaries yeah. thing yeah. when I was 24. Yeah. And I'd been on the pill for seven years. Yeah. By that point. Yeah. I was like, who am I? Yeah. I felt <laughs> like that. So I was set, from 17 to 31, I was on the pill. And then was just like, I want to go free range. And like, <laughs> so many egg puns. All the eggs. It is not Easter anymore. <laughs> Calm down. I wanted to know what my body was like. I wasn't in a relationship. Like, I felt like, okay, just, just try it. I don't know what difference there is. But now I sort of don't really want to go back on because mm. I'm just like, well, I'm c coping fine and I'm happy with the barrier method for sex. But like, I don't know. I just have felt consistently like I don't know what is going on I don't know why I was put on it I don't know what it was doing to my body didn't realize it wasn't actually a period because you know when you you have the yeah, you the have withdrawal the, bleed. the withdrawal bleed you don't actually have days. to have you don't have to have it was because of the Pope the Pope didn't think that Catholic <laughs> women should be allowed to be on contraception unless it seemed like they were women and having their periods really? uh, yeah there's a whole like horizon more, doc about it more appeasing yeah wow. it's like I no they're still that. women because they're bleeding like yeah Horrific. Oh my goodness. So I don't know why. So basically, I was just stopping my periods and just fucking up my ovaries for however many years. Mm. But luckily, they came back and were just like. Your ovaries came back. The, the ovaries Full came back. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, re it's quite terrifying, like this seven day thing, because it's just basically you're turning off, 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 off your ovaries, and all of a sudden they start waking back up again and start like producing. Uh, no, I don't know. Again. And that's <laughs> science. the that's science. <laughs> and then that's the bit that you can get pregnant in because you're mo more likely to get the day wrong when you're then starting the pill again, unless you have like the sugar pills. But it's all mm -hmm. just like, yeah, I feel like completely like there's so much stuff that I just don't know, but I was just doing this for decades because that's what you do. Yeah. Like even the, like that's what you do as a young woman. Yeah. You take the pill because you've got to protect your own body and it's, you know, the you onus isn't pregnant. on anyone yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. I, I went on the pill when I was 17 and that was because I was like having regular sex with my partner. And so I was like, I should have like an extra That's method. sensible. Um, yeah. But I hadn't even thought that any of the other options that were out there were for me. I kind of saw them yeah. as like, oh, the first thing that everyone does is go on the pill. It wasn't like, yeah, like something like the implant or the coil. I was like, oh, that's for like, older people who've already had children. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. Yeah. I think I had that sort of th thinking as well, like, no, yeah. I won't do that. I don't know. No. But you go to you the doctor and you yeah. go, I want to go on the pill. Yeah. Mm. And the doctor just goes, OK, and then asks you some questions. But they don't go, have you thought about mm. other options? Yeah. Mm. I definitely think that I considered the pill to be like a grown up, cool, that's what you did, mm -hmm. you know. Like I'm not even embarrassed about it now. Like I'm just like, <laughs> like looking back. That was it. Was it was a way of showing that you were growing up and an adult. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Yeah, look at me taking hormones. <laughs> <laughs> and still, like, even yeah. now, when I had my son, the first appointment I had with the midwife was, "Are you taking contraception? Yeah, are you taking contraception?" I mean, why and I was just like, onus on, on "Wow, man, yeah, why like is, that's the yeah. first thing you should think of, like days out of a hospital yeah. is." You don't want to get, sure you don't you don't want to get that again. Yeah. Yeah, stuck, you know, your hormones yeah. are absolutely you don't everywhere. Want to know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, fair point. <laughs> but it's true, like, why is there not, why, why are we not in a situation in 2019 where if you're in a heterosexual relationship and you've just had a baby, your male partner is being encouraged to take some birth control mm. that hasn't been invented yet because it <laughs> made men too moody, wah, wah, wah. But like, why is that not what's going on? Yeah. Why is it that we're still pumping exactly. our bodies full of hormones? Yeah. And your hormones Furious. at that point are absolutely yeah. everywhere. But yeah, take, take some synthetic take some more. hormones, yeah. why not? Yeah. It's almost like, just let your body like, just settle down yeah. after that whirlwind. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what scares me yeah. now about going on contraceptives. Cause I, I don't know what one I'd want to take. Yeah. and. I don't know, I feel more like me now. And I yeah. still have these highs and lows. I get PMS, but I don't know, I'm, I'm scared of that going away. Mm. I don't, I don't mm. like PMS, but mm, yeah, I don't know, I I'm just exactly scared of not having it. Yeah, I, don't know. I definitely had that 
like coming off the pill being like, oh, I'm gonna get to know my body and all of that. And then for, for some, it's like, yeah, no, this is cool, I can live with this. For me, I was like, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nice cool. to meet you, I'm terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nice to meet you, you're not my friend. Yeah. yeah, like, see you later. But I do think, like, it can be empowering for people both ways, like empowering to be like, this is what my body does without any synthetic hormones in it. And then it can also be empowering for people to be like, hey, you don't have to have your yeah. period. If yeah. you want to stop it, you can stop yeah, it. Like yeah. there are ways. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's nice to have those options, but it would re be really great if they sorted out yeah. getting some contraception for people with uh, sperm. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Come on, team did you testes. hear about that though? Yeah. I did, but for the Hormone Diaries book, I did do a bit more research into it. It's a bit more complicated, oh, but okay. we can still be angry. But we're still angry. We can still be angry. Because it still doesn't exist. Yeah. Like, why does it not exist? How that... many men would take it? Well, I, I think a lot. Oh, quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. This is the thing, that oh, that's, that's what they good. always say. Because men don't want to be dads either. Yeah. 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 This is what my, like, my, my friends who, my, who have just given birth and, you know, are all like, oh, I don't want to have to take the pill again. And it's like, yeah, their husbands are like, I don't want another baby yet. Mm. So, oh, you know, make sure maybe teenage boys aren't going to take it. Yeah. Fine, but like there, are, I think there are a lot of adult males who would just be like, yeah, absolutely, I want to mm. either be in a relationship and not have a baby yet, or I just want to shag around yeah. and be mm -hmm. sure that I'm not going to, you know, end up with any, you know, play yeah, school bills. Yeah. To yeah. yeah, it's it's really interesting because obviously, like the history of it is that the the burden of reproduction like falls on the person with the womb because the consequences of a pregnancy affect them more. Mm. Mm -hmm. But with hormonal contraception, it turns out it's easier to stop one egg or one or two eggs releasing a month than it is, it's much harder to stop like 200 million sperm releasing yeah. any minute That's of every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it yeah. be then. I mean, There's... women are fertile, yeah. what, two days a month? Men are fertile like every Constant. single day. Yes. All of the time. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things that are like in development, but ugh, it could be years until yeah, we see them. There's like a gel that you can rub on yes, arms. There's another gel that you that's like a temporary vasectomy. So mm. it injects into the tubes. It creates, the gel kind of like creates a blockage. And then you have another injection to dissolve it, to dissolve it, it. and then it will all like. But this is the thing. Again. I feel like it's just there's no urgency for it because you know women and people with wombs have taken responsibility for it for so long. And like you say, the onus is on the female body. So of course we're going to carry on. Yeah. Like mm. it is always going to be more harmful for us to not. But still, my God, like they've put people on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Sort that's some, difficult. Come yeah. On. Now sort try and stop two hundred million sperm. Yeah, <laughs> we can do this. Is it? I don't even know if it's two hundred million. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm. It's a lot you know, I think it's possible. It's conquerable. Yeah, it's yeah. only in a small space as well. Yeah, and like, you're a tiny blockade one, yeah. them. Yeah, with the spring. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they need the spring. They need a spring. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm looking at you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it. I imagine. I love that. I thought I wanted to end this on when it comes to periods and contraception. What are you grateful for? Yeah, what's the thing you're most grateful for? And what's the thing that you're most frustrated about? Planned Parenthood. Very grateful for Planned Parenthood. Yeah. <laughs> just any like, kind of just any service. kind of like yeah, yeah. service like that because it's free. They don't even, like in France, I don't know here, but like they don't take your name. Um, oh, really? Mm -hmm. They, like, if you don't want to give your name, mm -hmm. you, they don't take your name. It's not in your medical record, it's not in anything, and it is like super safe. They have like actual doctors who do all the tests that you need for free um, until you're 18. After that, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think to counteract that, the thing I'm frustrated about is the lack of funding and the closing yeah. down oh, of yeah. all of these sexual health services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, so yeah. grateful for them. And like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was going to I'm so grateful for this. And like, uh, the, there's one in Archway that I went to. And I think I've been to that one. It's a lovely one. <laughs> it's a lovely They've got round seats and they twizzle <laughs> round. Mm -hmm. and everyone's really great there. And mm -hmm. they all make you feel you know completely not judged and and welcome and you just get yourself sorted out but yet 
the appointments are so hard to come by because they're mm -hmm. so underfunded and it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's so essential. Yeah, definitely. What about in terms of like your body, your period that you're grateful for? I am grateful for the way that my body can feel at certain points in the month. And I'm like, God, that's just science. Like <laughs> all this energy is just coming up and there's, I feel so capable and there's so much I can do. And then there's other times where I just feel like, you know, my body is saying to me, slow down. And that I feel really grateful to be in a society, in a situation that I'm lucky enough that I can listen to that. I can, you know, work with my body rather than feel like I'm constantly having to, like, I don't have to keep managing my sort of female body out of mm -hmm. existence, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm grateful that contraceptives are free in this mm. country. I think that's brilliant. I have friends who live elsewhere and they're expensive. Oh, yeah. So I think it's amazing that they're free. What I hate, gosh, I hate that I've had a period and had and have endometriosis, I guess. Yeah. But in a way, there's a positive to that because I've learned so much about my body, about other people's bodies, and I've been able to use it as a platform to do good in Silver a twisted way. It. I'm grateful. Yeah. 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 You don't wish you didn't have to have done that. Yeah. You would have learned it all before. Yes, but it's happened and I'm grateful. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your experiences and chatting away. This has been really lovely. Thanks. 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 Thank you so much for watching and thanks to my contributors, Katie, Gabby and A. I'm going to leave their links in the description for you to check out. And please do continue the conversation in the comments. I'd love to hear your stories about periods and contraception. So the reason why I made this video is to celebrate the launch of my new book, The Hormone Diaries, The Bloody Truth About Our Periods. And it is out now. So you can get it online. I'll leave a link in the description or in any good book bookshops. Um, you can request it from your local bookstore if you like. In this book, there is actually loads of crowdsourced contributions from some of you. So lots of diary entries and letters such as, dear my period, dear my menstrual cup, dear my PCOS, and also lots of my stories and just lots of chat about periods, contraception, our vaginas and wombs and pregnancy even. Yeah, we went there. And menopause. My mum wrote a thing about menopause in here. It's great. There is also going to be a Facebook group for a community of people who want to continue talking about these things, maybe get advice from each other, ask questions, share articles, and I'll leave that in the description too, and would love to see you in that group. So please do buy my book, buy it for yourself, buy it for a friend, um, and give it a read. I appreciate it so, so, so much. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.